Good morning, brothers and sisters, friends. We welcome you this Easter morning, this special morning where we, we commemorate and think about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Presiding at the meeting today is Bishop Mike McDowell. My name is Todd Coons. I'll be conducting. Welcome, family, friends, those who are here to worship with us and here to also hear these testimonies and words of our leaving and returning missionaries. I'd like to recognize Brother Dustin Smith from the High Council, who's with us on the stand today. And we're grateful for Jane Rosen for playing the organ and for Ava Cook for leading us in the music. For the members of the ward, uh, next week, so for everybody, next week we will have the opportunity to hear from our prophet at General Conference. So we invite you to tune in and hear those messages. The following week is State Conference, and the State Presidency has sent out a letter, and it should be in your your inbox and your email, so, so look for that. I'm not going to read the whole letter, but I'm going to paraphrase a little bit of it for you. So <clears throat> from our stake presidency, they said, the semi-annual stake conference will be held on this coming Saturday and Sunday. Elder Mark A. Godfritson and Area Authority 70 will preside. So we encourage you to prepare to receive the instruction of our Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the message they have for us. The conference will have three sessions. There'll be a Saturday evening session held at 6 p.m. at the Stake Center. There'll be a leadership session Sunday morning at 7 a.m. at the Stake Center. And, and again, look at the email that came out to you to see if you are in the group that's invited to that. And finally, the, uh, the Sunday morning session will be held at 10 a.m. at the Stake Center. It won't be broadcast, so, so be there. Be there early, and if you want a soft seat, be there really early. And it'll be an amazing session. They close by saying, brothers and sisters, we love and appreciate each of you, and we know that you will be spiritually blessed during this conference. In preparation, we invite you and your families to reach out to those you are assigned to minister. As a state presidency, we feel strongly that your preparation will contribute to strengthening your spiritual foundations. Sincerely, uh, President Sean Cullimore, Curtis Keller, and Troy Wallen. So we invite you to be there for that. We'll begin our service today by singing hymn number 200, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, after which Brother Ben Hott will offer the invocation.
Our dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful to be here on this beautiful Easter Sunday. We're thankful for thy son, Jesus Christ, for the life and ministry that he, that he led, the perfect example that he offered to us. We're thankful for his atonement, his death, and his resurrection, for the opportunity we have to come to earth learn from our mistakes, repent, and grow because of them, for us to overcome sin and death and be able to return to live with Thee. Please help us to have Thy Spirit with us here today and throughout the day. Please bless our families and all those that couldn't attend. We say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We don't have any ward business today. We do have an item of stake business that we'll hear from Brother Smith. After Brother Smith's business, the business he shares, we'll prepare for the sacrament by singing hymn number 169, as now we take the sacrament, after which it will be prepared and blessed the congregation. Happy Easter, brothers and sisters. If your name is read, I invite you to stand. Brockton Hot, Caden Entz, and Nicholas Carroll. Brothers and sisters, these three brethren, it is proposed that they receive the Melchizedek priesthood and be ordained to the office of elder. All in favor, please manifest. Any opposed by the same sign? Thank you, brother.
We have a wonderful number of messages and musical numbers for us today. Well, the first musical number will be the number Because, sung by Alan Madison, Lenny Soki, and Canon Cash, accompanied by Pauline Dana. After that musical number, we'll hear from Cohen Ferguson, who's preparing to leave on his mission and we're looking, for his me- looking forward to his message. Our next musical number will be Miracle by the Maplewood Ward Primary and accompanied by Sister Jan Jones. The next musical number will be Peace in Christ by Cohen Ferguson, Carter Chipman, Hannah Bates, Claire Jones, and accompanied by Sister Catherine Jones. Our next musical number will be Risen, uh, sung by the Maplewood Ward Choir, led by Sister Kimberly Smith and accompanied by Sister Emily Cook. Then we'll hear from Trey and Cash, who's recently returned from his mission in Florida. The final musical number will be Gloria, sung by the Maplewood Ward Choir and accompanied by Sister Izzy Holden and led by Sister Jen Hughes. All right. And we'll go to that point. Thanks. As he walked with men, I know the way. Because he calmed the storm, I'm not afraid. Because he fell beneath the clouds, he lifted me above. Because he shed his blood for me, I know. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, happy Easter. Um, I'm Cohen Ferguson, and um, uh, soon to be Elder Ferguson here in a couple of weeks, but 
I've been assigned to a labor in the South Africa Durban mission, and I'll report to the Johannesburg MTC April 19th, and I couldn't be more excited, and I'm so blessed to be able to serve a mission. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's helped me get to where I'm at today. Um, it's been a long journey to get to this point, and I'm blessed to have the greatest support system around me. From my friends to my family, you guys truly are the best. Um, to my brothers and to my new sister, Haley, I'm so glad to have you guys growing up. Byron, I've looked up to you so much since as long as I could remember. Um, and I'm thankful for your example and for your willing, willingness to always include me in everything. Wyatt, I know we didn't always get along growing up, but these past few years of high school, we've been best friends. And I love you, and I'm going to miss you. Tate. To my youngest brother, thank you for always being my hype man, for cheering me up, coming to all my games, and you know, asking to play basketball with me, doing all the little things. Um, I'm going to miss that. And Haley, thank you for giving me a sister, and I couldn't have asked for someone better for Byron to marry, and I'm hoping to be an uncle when I get back. So, um, Dad, I just want to say thank you for everything you've done for me, and the thing I love most about you is uh, your love for our Savior. And it's been a, it's been a blessing having you in preschool with us the past couple of years. And so thank you for everything. Mom, you've always been there for me. You've been my biggest cheerleader by, by far. And I couldn't ask for better parents and especially a be better mom growing up. And I want you to know how much I love and appreciate you. Um, to start my talk, I'd like to begin by sharing a scripture from the Bible that sets the stage for this Easter Sunday. And that's... Uh, Luke 22, 40, 42, it says, Saying, Father, if thou wilt be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And I just love that the Savior knew that this was going to be challenging, and he knew that he was going to do the Lord's will instead of him, and that's what I love most about the Savior. Um, he, the mighty Jehovah, condescended to be born to mortal life in a stable of Bethlehem, he grew as a boy in Nazareth and increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. He was baptized by John in the waters of Jordan, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. During the, during the three years of his earthly ministry, he did what none others had ever done before, he taught as none other had previously taught. Then came his time to be offered. There was the supper in the upper room, his last with the twelve in mortality. As he, washed his, as he washed their feet, he taught a lesson in humility and service they would never forget. There followed the suffering of Gethsemane, which suffering, he said, caused myself, even God, the greatest of all, to tremble because of pain and to bleed from every poor and to suffer both body and spirit. He was taken by rough and crude hands, and in, that, and in the night, contrary to the laws, was brought before Annas and then Caiaphas, the, the evil officer of the Sanhedrin. Then he was taken to Pilate, the Roman governor, to whom his wife said in warning, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? Pilate sent him to Herod, where Christ was abused and beaten. His head was crowned with sharp thorns. A mocking robe of purple was thrown upon his bleeding back. Again, he was taken before Pilate, to whom the mob, the mob cried, Crucify him, crucify him. With stumbling steps, he walked the way to Golgotha, Golgotha where, he wound, where his wounded body was nailed to the cross in the most inhumane and pain-ridden me method possible. Yet he sat in this moment of agony, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The hours passed as he was in pain. The earth shook. The veil of the temple was rent. From his dry lips came the words, Father, into thine, thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. It was over. His mortal life was finished. He had offered it as a ransom for all. Gone were the hopes of those who loved him. Forgotten were the promises he had made. His body was placed in a tomb on the eve of the Jewish Sabbath. Then, early in the morning of Sunday, 
Mary Magdalene and other women came to the tomb. They wondered as they hurried how the stone might be rolled from the door of the sepulcher. Arriving, they saw an angel who spoke to them. I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. It had never before happened. The tomb was the answer to the question of the ages. Well, did Paul say, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The miracle of that resurrection morning, the first Easter Sunday, is a miracle for all mankind. It is the miracle of the power of God, whose beloved Son gave his life to atone for the sins of all. A sacrifice of love for every son and daughter of God. In so doing, he broke the seals of death. All of us will die, but that will not be the end. Just as he took up his body and came forth from the tomb, even so shall all of us enjoy a reunion of body and spirit to become living souls in the day of our own resurrection. I'm so excited I have the opportunity to go to South Africa and to teach them about the Savior and about the atonement. And I believe that the same peace and comfort I receive from relying on my Savior is the same that others will be able to receive as well. I saw this quote at my former bishop's house in my old ward a couple years ago, and it has stuck with me ever since. It is, the Lord wants effort. Effort brings progression. Progression is perfection. I love the fact that we do not have to be perfect by ourselves, but through Christ and through his atonement, we will be perfected in him. Um, last Sunday, my, my cousin gave his farewell talk, and after he gave his talk, one of the hymns we sang during the sacrament was, Go Forth in Faith. And the, the Spirit really struck, spoke out to me, so I just wanted to read the third verse of the song, and it says, Go forth with power to tell the world the gospel is restored, that all may gain eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. Go forth to preach his glorious truths of peace, of joy, and love, that all who heed his holy word may praise the Lord above. During the song, I was just hit with an overwhelming feeling of peace and comfort, and I knew that for the next few years that serving a mission would be the best thing for me. And uh, this gospel means so much to me, and I want those who haven't had their opportunity to hear this message to hear it. Um, but last October during General Conference, Elder Uchtdorf shared a message that I really liked. He said, but I bear witness that the moment you decide to return and walk in the way of our Savior and Redeemer, his power will enter your life and transform it. There is no such thing as being too bad or unworthy of Christ's atonement. We're all human, and he atoned for all of us because none of us are perfect, but through him and his atonement, we can use his light and power to change our hearts. He also quoted uh, Elder Jeffrey R. Holland, who said, It is not possible for you to sink lower than the infinite light of Christ's atoning sacrifice. I just want, all, want to invite all of you to turn to Christ and use the gift he gave us. The atonement is for us all, and the Savior is waiting for us and is welcoming us in. Um, to close, I just want to bear my testimony that I know that as we make time for the Lord daily, that we will see the blessings of, of this gospel and see, see his hand in all things. And he knows each and every one of us personally. And um, I know that our Savior willingly gave up his life for each and every one of us, that we could overcome both sin and death. And um, I'm thankful for the plan of salvation and the opportunity it provides to allow us to w live with our families for all eternity. Um, and I know that this church is the true church that was restored by our prophet Joseph Smith. And, uh, you know, for those uh, thinking about going on a mission, um, it's not going to be fun at times. It's not going to be hard, but the Lord has asked us to do it. And it's the least we could do for him for all he's done for us. And um, I'm thankful for the opportunity I had to serve my mission for this church. And I'm excited to see what's in store for me. I love my Savior, Jesus Christ, and I say this thing in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
listen to his words. Let them come alive. If we know him as he is, there is peace in Christ. He gives us hope when hope is gone. He gives us strength when we can't go on. He gives us shelter. In the storms of life, when there's no peace on earth, there is peace in Christ. There is peace in Christ when we walk with Him. Through the streets of Galilee to Jerusalem, and the broken hearts dry the tear-filled eyes. When we live the way He lived, there is peace in Christ. He gives us hope when hope is gone. Gives us strength when we can't go on. He gives us shelter in the storms of life. When there's no peace on earth, there is peace in Christ.
I don't think I need to give my homecoming talk. <laughs> the spirit has been so strong. Um, I'm not supposed to cry right now. I, I put in a part of my talk where it says cry, but it wasn't the first part, so we're, we're kind of going off cue. But thank you for being here today. Thank you for being here for this Easter Sunday. He lives. Enough said. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, brothers and sisters, aloha. aloha. We could do it a little bit louder. Brothers and sisters, aloha. aloha. Perfect. It's so good to see you guys here. It's been, it's been a while. It's been two years. Uh, three years, probably, actually. But, <laughs> but for those who don't know me, my name is Trey King Cash. I am the oldest of the Cash family. For the past three years, I've been serving in Orlando, Florida mission. Yes, there is a gator in every single pond. And yes, I've eaten gator. Just imagine like a chicken that's like soaked in like swamp water. And that's how it tasted. So it's definitely a acquired taste. But, you know, I just had to say that I tried it. So... But I can't thank my Heavenly Father and my Savior enough for the opportunity, man, here I go again, <laughs> to be a part of their work. Missions are one of the hardest, yet most fulfilling things anyone can do in their life. I hope you reflect on your mission often, if you have served. And if you are planning on serving, I hope it's your goal too. Since this homecoming talk, since this is my homecoming talk, uh, you could hear some of the experiences and walk kind of the, the way that I walked for these last couple of years. But first, I'd like, to, I'd like to talk about someone very important. Actually, the, very, the most important person, the why that we're here. His name is Jesus. I hope you've heard of him. Brothers and sisters, that is why we're here today. Worshiping together and singing together. There's a scripture that says, Weeping may endure for a night or two, but joy cometh in the morning. Jesus is that joy of the morning. But what exactly did he do that has brought you joy, me joy, and the friends I taught in Florida joy? Here are a few words that will help as we ponder. Repentance. <laughs> resurrection. Restitution, reconciliation, redemption. What do all these words have in common? The prefix re or re, re, with the meaning of again or again and again. Because of Jesus Christ and his defeat over death by being resurrected or by living again, the Easter morning or that Easter morning long ago, we can defeat death and live again also. Redemption comes because of his suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane and on the cross. We are again and again saved from our sins through the blood of the Lamb. It is possible to repent or again be forgiven as we look to him and turn away from our wrongdoings. His charity and grace can reconcile or again bring us back peace, friendship, and love in our relationship with others, even in ourselves, and on and on and on. At this point, I hope you understand that the Savior's mission is a mission of redos, starting overs, keep goings, get back ups, and push ons. Comebacks again and again and again and again. And again. So that being said, can I now share with you three people who I have met in my mission that have personally been touched by Jesus and have felt those words that I have described. About, over a, about a little over a year into my mission, I was transferred into the middle of Orlando and was told that I was only to use bikes in this area. It was summer, and if you've not been to Orlando during the summer, it is hot. And not just like hot, like Arizona hot, like where you like dry up like a raisin. It's like, I don't know, I feel like it's 10 times worse actually being home now. It's actually nice right now. But it's hot and it's humid. 
There was one day where I looked at the weather and it was going to be 105 with 100% humidity, and I had a bike. And that day I got rained on too because it always rains at 3 o'clock. So that was a rough day. But you walk outside and you start sweating by just blinking. Um, it was it was a hard, and for the first two weeks I was really struggling, until I met um, Joseph or Jill. I first was able to learn about him during a phone call. We just got out of a lesson when we got a call. It was his wife who told us that Joe just got his first presidency approval to be baptized. When Joe met with the missionaries a year ago, he was on probation. And during the time that we were teaching, he was still on probation. But as he met with the missionaries and with the, wife, with the help of his wife, who was a member, he, started, he wanted to start again. He wanted to be different. When he heard what it means to be sealed to his wife, he was determined to change. Biking in that 105 degree heat and 100% humidity was worth it to teach him. I saw him change as he repented, did all he could to reconcile himself to God and to do everything in his power to right the wrongs that he had done in the past. I remember the day that he was baptized. The joy that was felt as he rose from the water was undeniable. After so much time of waiting and preparing it to happen, he started over. He felt, to sing the singing, he felt like singing the song of redeeming love. He was beaming with true joy. That was about close to a year ago now. At the end of my mission, his wife texted me and said that Joe and her were planning on being sealed June 1st for time and all eternity. And he invited me to join with them. What a blessing. What a story of Joe and Joseph. He knows the joy that comes in the morning. Fast forward to the end of my mission, I was in an area named Citrus Tower. At about, go, about a week into the area, we met a friend, um, Alexandria, or her name was for short, Alex. She's the sister of a member who was baptized about two years ago. As we met her and listened to her story, we were amazed at the strength that she had. She had gone through so much in her life, trials, afflictions, anything that you could think of. It was easy to say that her life was not has not been full of sunshines, rainbows, and butterflies. But because of the example of her sister, she wanted to change. She saw the change in her sister and knew that is what she wanted. Every lesson we had with her, she had questions and listened and soaked it all in. She wanted to change and she did. Every, every lesson we could see, or every lesson that we had with her, we could see a difference in her. Her happiness increased over a period of teaching her. The more she learned about Jesus and the plan of happiness and the mission of our Savior, the more you could see the light in her, the hope in her, the faith in her, the peace in her. She was baptized a month later. There were plenty of times during that period where people were shocked by the change, the happiness and the joy she experienced. They saw her for what she used to be or what her life used to look like in the past and realized that she was not the per same person anymore. She restarted. She began again a new life in Christ. Brothers and sisters, isn't that why Jesus performed the atonement this last week, two millennia ago? Isn't that why he suffered for every sin? Bled from every poor? Because he knew that Joe and Alex needed him. He saw their sorrow and pain, and he knew that he could fix it. He did it for us. I don't think we'll be able to feel the joy that our Savior felt when he was resurrected, but I believe that he did feel every pain and sorrow and affliction in the Garden of Gethsemane and on the cross. But I also wholeheartedly believe that on that morning, he truly felt all of our joys and happiness and hope. Last story of Jesus changing a life. There was a boy born in the church and raised his whole life learning about Jesus Christ and his atonement. He felt his love throughout his life, but let the world and the temptation sway him to making mistakes and falling. His whole life he wanted to serve a mission because that was the tradition and the glimpse of joy 
and the glimpse that he, of joy that he felt, he felt like he could share with others, even though it was so minimal. So he went out, and he tried to serve and teach and help other people. But as he goes into his first area on the mission, this is how he describes it. Quote, it is as if, if I've been hit by a train of guilt, pain, sorrow, sickness, because of the sins that I have hid and not repented of. How can I teach people about turning their life to Christ when in reality, I haven't done so myself? How can I teach a person a principle of the gospel that I didn't even follow? And so he went on day after day of feeling this way until he could deal with the godly sorrow no more. The boy called his mission president, confessing everything, getting it all out of him, word vomiting, everything till he was in tears, and as what seemed at least figuratively in sackcloth and ashes. But leaving that office, he felt different. He knew he wasn't done seeking forgiveness, but he knew that he made the step forward he needed to. He knew no matter what, he could continue to feel the glimpse of peace and the joy he felt as he left that office that day. No matter if it was staying out or going home, he ended up going home from his mission to further his repentance process. Those five months were the hardest five months of his life. He was on a roller coaster of ups and downs until one day. He was reading the Book of Mormon in Alma chapter 36. This is Alma the Younger and his story of redemption and change. As he began to read, he could not help but realize he was in Alma's shoes. He could feel the story as if he was there. And this is what it was. And this is the part where I put, I'm going to cry because I, I am. So, <sighs> But I was racked with eternal torment for my soul. For my soul was hauled up to the greatest degree and racked with all my sins. Yea, I had remembered my sins and my iniquities, for which I was tormented with the pains of hell. Yea, I saw that I had rebelled against my God and that I had not kept his holy commandments. Yea, I had murdered many of his children, or rather led them away unto destruction. Yea, and in fine, so great had been my iniquity that the very thought of coming into the presence of my God did rack my soul with inexpressible horror. Oh, thought I, that I could be banished and become extinct both soul and body, that I might not be brought to stand in the presence of my God, to be judged of my deeds. And now, for three days and for three nights I was racked, even with the pains of a damned soul. And it came to pass that I was thus racked with torment, while I was hurled up by the memory of my sins, behold, I remembered also to have heard of my father prophesy unto the people concerning the coming of one, Jesus Christ. A son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. Now as my mind caught a hold upon this thought, I cried within my heart, Oh Jesus, thou son of God, have mercy on me. For I'm in the goal of bitterness, and am encircled about the everlasting chains of death. And now behold, when I thought this, I could remember my pains no more. Yea, I was hard up by the memory of my sins no more. And oh, what joy, and what marvelous light did I behold. Yea, my soul was filled with joy, as exceeding was my pain. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that there could be no... There could be nothing so exquisite and bitter was as my pains. Yea, and again, saying to you, my son, that on the other hand, there can be nothing so exquisite and sweet as was my joy. As you can probably tell through my, my emotions, that this boy had, had that moment, at that moment changed. And those scriptures changed him. He never felt the Savior's love grasp him so hard he never felt the peace that was felt as he read that account and as he knelt to pray that night. He felt the forgiveness that surpasses all understanding. He was changed by Jesus Christ and his grace. 
He finished the months of being home and went back out and served with his heart, mind, and strength, teaching the love of Christ and the great plan of redemption and what joy he felt and what gratefulness he has for his Savior, Jesus Christ. These three stories, I hope, have conveyed the reason why we're here today, the reason why we live the gospel of our Savior, why we choose to follow our Savior, not just today, but every day of our lives. There are plenty of scriptures that tell us to remember or again think of our Savior that, and what he did for us back then and what he's doing for us now. We are asked to remember his name and what it represents. Repentance, resurrection, restitution, reconciliation, redemption. I'm grateful for my mission. I'm grateful for my Heavenly Father and his plan. I'm grateful for Jesus Christ. He is the reason that we have this plan. Jesus Christ is the joy of the morning. Jesus is the hope in our life. Jesus Christ is charity, love, hope, and faith. For those who are on the fence of serving a mission, serve and watch the change that happens in others and in you. The Lord has a plan for you. For those who served, remember the path he put you on and the plan he still has for you. For those who came home early, our Savior still loves you. He still cares for you. He still wants you to be on his covenant path. He has not given up on you, so don't give up on him. The Lord's invitation to the Nephites after his resurrection, after his resurrection still applies today. Arise and come forth unto me, that you may thrust your hands into my side, and also that you may feel the prints of the nails in my hands and in my feet, that you may know that I am the God of Israel and the God of the whole earth that have been slain for the sins of the world. May we all arise this Easter morning and every day to look forward and to feel the prints of his hands and of his feet and personally know that he overcame all all sickness, all pain, everything, everything so that we can have joy again and forever as we follow him. Brothers and sisters, I leave you with my testimony that our Savior truly does love us, that he truly does care for us, and that as you lean on to him, that will be your greatest strength in this life. You are sons and daughters of God, all here for a reason. You're here to have joy. You're here to realize that Jesus Christ is your joy and that through him and only through him can you make it back to our Father. The mission has been an amazing thing and I'm so grateful for the service that I have I've given to my Lord and my Savior and I'm so excited for Cohen and for all of those young men and young women looking to serve. You will be changed. Jesus Christ is risen. I love him. The church is true. The Book of Mormon is true. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Wow, we have been well fed by music and the word today as we've worshipped our Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, Trayton, could you come up for a second? You've been an inspiration. We love seeing your plaque up there. It's, it's hung up there while Trayton's been on his mission and it's inspired all of us. Thank you for your words today. We'll close our meeting today by singing hymn number 199, He is Risen, after which Brother Aidan Anderson will offer the benediction. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that we have to remember the atonement of Jesus Christ and um, all the blessings and joy and peace that we're able to have because of it. And please bless how we can keep this spirit that we felt um, throughout the day as we um, celebrate Easter and, and with us throughout the week and that we can uh, find ways to share um, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the spirit we felt with those around us. And we say these things in Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.